The last subtopic for chapter 11 is the exhaust gas treatment. This is one of the important topic in the internal combustion engine research and development. The emission standard for internal combustion engine become stricter. In the US, we have several standards that is managed nationally by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and more recently along with uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA. The California state has its own standard that is even stricter. It is managed through the California Air Resources Board, or CARB. In Europe, they have a Euro 6, and then Japan has its own standard. China, they are ready to implement China 7. Right now, they are on China 6. So, substantial further reduction in emission can be obtained by removing pollutant from the exhaust gases in the engine exhaust system. So, in this case, we need to use uh, devices. Uh, the first devices that can be used is a type of catalytic converter. So this is an oxidizing catalyst for hydrocarbon and CO and also reducing catalyst for NOx. We can also use a three-way catalyst that remove all these three. So it means HC, CO and NOx. We also have a trap or filter for particulate. And then in the diesel engine, we also use what is called selective catalytic reduction, SCR, that is used to reduce the NOx emission. The task of catalytic after treatment devices is to oxidize the CO and HC in the exhaust gas to CO2 and H2O at temperature level the exhaust gases can readily provide with NOx, which is predominantly NO, especially for the gasoline engine, the task is a reduction to N2, so nitrogen. Again, it is at or below the available exhaust gas temperature. If we rely on the chemical process to reduce the air pollutant at the typical exhaust gas temperature, only modest pollutant reduction in the exhaust system occurs. This is because the activation energy or the energy barrier for the chemical process that is used to break the air pollutant molecule bonds is above the thermal energy available at the typical exhaust gas temperature. The catalyst, which is a collection of noble metal atoms on high surface area substrate, facilitates the desire chemistry by reducing the energy barrier so reaction can occur at significantly lower temperature. For CO and HC oxidation on the catalyst surface, sufficient oxygen is also needed and this will be available through the stoichiometric combustion setup. For effective operation of the catalyst, the exhaust catalyst must operate at an elevated temperature and with an exhaust gas flow rate and composition matched to the catalyst size and chemical conversion task. Thus, the insertion of the catalyst into the engine exhaust required that the catalyst and engine be designed as a two interacting system and then the warm-up of the catalyst following a cold engine start is one key area so the catalyst surface must reach the temperature above around 300 c to become effective and the exhaust gas flow and temperature are the available sources of the thermal energy this feature illustrates the warm-up of an oxidation catalyst and its evolving impact on the engine out HC emission. As you can see on this figure that uh, during the starting and warm up of spark ignition engine, the engine HC emissions are higher. So you can see from this level, so they are uh, high. Okay, 
and then the engine out HC emissions become lower once the engine is already warm up so we have a lower level somewhere here and then the catalyst take a time to warm up it's mean that it take a time for the catalyst to light off that is attain a temperature at which is the catalyst efficiency is defined as the percentage of a given pollutant removed by the catalyst you can see on the middle of this figure so initially the catalyst efficiency is a very low so even zero and then it take a time for the catalyst operation to be effective and then it's reached a maximum efficiency somewhere here once the catalyst operate in the effective operating condition then we will see a significant reduction of the engine out emission and usually this catalyst light off takes some 10 to 30 seconds depending on the engine condition this feature is showing the reaction energy path for reactant transitioning to products illustrating the role of the activation energy barrier without the catalyst the required energy barrier is at this level and then the task of the catalyst is to reduce the energy barrier so that this chemical reaction can occur at lower temperature for example an exothermic reaction here is co oxidation into co2 the thermal energy release uh, delta h is a positive and then the presence of the catalyst here significantly reduces the energy barrier to the reaction of a co into the co2 a catalyst can be selective that it accelerates certain specific reaction much more than others a catalyst selectivity which is usually designed into a catalyst through the elements incorporated in its formulation is also usually dependent on its temperature so it enhances specific reaction within a temperature window an example of this selective catalyst is SCR selective catalytic reduction this SCR is used to reduce the NOx emission automotive catalysts are heterogeneous catalysts that is the active noble metal catalyst material are dispersed over a solid surface this two feature is showing an example of the structure and modes of catalyst operation on the top feature we have monolith design of a catalytic converter for spark ignition engine emission and then on the bottom side we have a cross section showing the monolith channel and wash coat and then a b here is showing the schematic of catalytically active so this is pt platinum sites dispersed over the wash coat surface so a monolith uh, or uh, it's kind of a honeycomb like structure are widely used in automotive applications while catalysts are not consumed during catalytic reactions they stay delayed deactivate with use and the important deactivation modes are poisoning and then falling or masking and thermal deactivation or sintering this feature illustrates the catalyst deactivation processes we have a poisoning here and then we have masking and then this one is a sintering so in this feature a the catalyst poisoning modes uh, occurs and in this case the number of active site is reduced so the catalyst activity decreases as well and then in this feature uh, masking or falling of the catalyst was cuts occurs so in this case it's cover the portion of the wash coat surface by physically depositing high molecule weight hc from a different source like oil or oil additive can be from dust corrosion and so on and then 
the third mode here in feature C and D here is the thermal deactivation or sintering. The catalytic converter were used to clean up the engine's exhaust gases until it is around 1970 and then a new regulation came up to uh, strictly control the amount of NOx emission. Then the new catalyst, what is called three-way catalyst, uh, became the dominant spark ignition engine catalyst technology. And then there is one parameter that is used to quantify the performance of a catalyst. It's called conversion efficiency. This is the ratio of the rate of the mass uh, removal in the catalyst of the particular pollutant of interest to the mass flow rate of that pollutant into the catalyst. It is equation 11.43. Let's take a look on the three-way catalyst. When a gasoline engine is operated at the stoichiometric air fuel ratio, then both NOx or NO reduction and CO and HC oxidation can be affected in a single catalyst bed. This is the mechanism for the CO oxidation and then HC oxidation and this one is the NO reduction. So CO is oxidized into CO2 and then HC is oxidized into CO2 and water vapor. And then for the NO reduction, we have N2 in the product. To have this catalyst to operate in an effective way, we need to have a stoichiometric air fuel ratio. It means that we have a very narrow window to realize the operation of this three-way catalyst. And in this case, we need to have a closed loop operating condition in the engine that will control the amount of air and fuel to be around stoichiometric operating condition. Holding the equilibrium ratio precisely on the chosen close to stoichiometric value is not practical expectation of such a feedback system. So sometimes uh, we have oxygen storage capacity or SC in the wash coat to compensate in case the engine operate a bit far from the stoichiometric operating condition. This feature is showing the conversion efficiency for NO, CO, and HC for a three-way catalyst as a function of the air fuel ratio. So to have an effective operation of this three-way catalyst, the engine need to be operated around this narrow window. So phi around one, okay? When we have a Lynch mixture operating condition, which is on the right side of this uh, blue region, then we will have a lower NOx efficiency, which means that we have a higher NOx production at the exhaust. We still have a good conversion efficiency for CO and HC. Conversely, if the engine is operated under rich mixture, which is to the left of this uh, narrow window, then we still have a good conversion efficiency for NOx, but we have a low conversion efficiency for CO and HC, this one. The next one is a DNOx catalyst. In this case, NO is removed by reduction using the CO hydrocarbon and H2 in the exhaust. No catalyst is available for the decomposition of NO to O2 and N2 that is sufficiently active for use in engine. So NO reduction can be carried out under rich condition where there is an excess in reducing species over oxidizing species. So and then the catalyst is then refers to an NO reduction catalyst. And this approach is used to regenerate a lean NOx trap. Sometimes it's called LNT. So when its NOx storage capacity reaches its limit. And then other devices that is used to reduce the NOx emission is what is called selective catalytic reduction or SCR. 
And this is the principal work of the lean knock strap or LNT. This catalyst system absorb and store NOx when an oxidizing exhaust gas flows through it. And then it is periodically regenerated by a reducing purge. So during this purge, the engine is operated fuel rich. So the exhaust gas constituent from this fuel rich mixture combustion can reduce the store NOx to N2. So the feature at the bottom side here is showing the schematic of the NOx uh, storage on the left side as well as NOx reduction on the right side. An issue with LNTs is their susceptibility to sulfur poisoning. So this catalyst can store sulfur oxides as sulfates. So to maintain high catalyst efficiency over a long period of operation, the sulfur content of the fuel must be very low. And this feature is showing the conversion efficiency. So this is the NOx conversion efficiency as a function of the catalyst inlet temperature. And this feature is showing two different catalysts. The top one is the new catalyst where it doesn't contain any uh, sulfur. So it has a very high conversion efficiency. And then the next one here which has a lower conversion efficiency is the H catalyst. So it has 3 ppm uh, sulfur and then 16 and this one is 30 ppm sulfur. So the more sulfur inside the catalyst, the lower the conversion efficiency is. So in this case, we need to make sure that the fuel used from the engine has a low sulfur content. The next after treatment is called selective catalytic NOx reduction. Sometimes people call this SCR. So this SCR is the established NOx catalytic reduction approach for diesel in passenger car as well as the one for heavy duty and off-road application. So in this SCR system, urea is generally used as the source for the ammoniac and H3. So this ammoniac will react with NO to produce N2 and water through this reaction. So this SCR catalyst have a higher efficiency than LNT technology. This feature is showing the schematic or the layout of multi-component SCR for NOx reduction in lean operating diesel engine. So we have a fee here. I think this one is the oxidation catalyst. And then we have a H here is urea hydrolysis catalyst. And then S is the SCR catalyst itself. And then we have O here, it is the oxidation catalyst. And you can also see here a different reaction ongoing on a different section of this after treatment system. So this one is what going on inside the SCR catalyst. And we have this reaction inside the oxidation catalyst as well as this one inside the hydrolysis catalyst. And this one is inside the oxidation catalyst. The next one is particulate filters or trap. This is an exhaust treatment technology that substantially reduces engine particulate emission. And this feature is showing the ceramic monolith particulate filter that is uh, mounted in the exhaust of turbocharged diesel engine. At some point, the trap particle need to be cleaned off and the process of this clean off is called regeneration process. So in this case, the particle is oxidized or burned so that the pressure drop inside this filter will decrease again back to the normal level. And we have a diesel particulate filter or DPF that is in common use for reducing this particulate emission. The next one is looking at the exhaust treatment system. So in the previous slide, we review a specific catalyst for HC, CO, NOx reduction. 
So we can also have all these three removal at once by having a three-way catalyst, which is uh, very typical in spark ignition engine. We also have a particulate trap device that, that is used to uh, reduce the particulate emission. So once again, in spark ignition engine, we have a three-way catalyst that can remove uh, the three main strictly regulated air pollutants, so CO, hydrocarbon, and NOx. And then in diesel engine, the primary engine out emission needing major reduction are particulate and NOx. This feature is showing the development of a gasoline spark ignition engine exhaust after treatment system. Uh, in the top feature, so feature A here, we have uh, this after treatment system until late 1970. So at that time, we only have oxidation catalyst for HC and CO. And then after that, the NOx emission is very important and there is a requirement to reduce the NOx emission. And we have a three-way catalyst from 1971 onwards. So this three-way catalyst remove all these uh, three emission pollutants at once. So we have HC, CO, and NOx. To have an effective operation of this three-way catalyst, the engine need to be operated under stoichiometric mixture condition. So in this case, we have a lambda sensor at the exhaust system that help ECU to control the amount of the fuel so that the engine is operated under stoichiometric mixture condition. And then this feature is showing a more complex system with a close coupled phase light of catalyst. So with this feature, the three-way catalyst is designed to heat up quickly following a cold start. And therefore, with this system, then we have a lower HC emission during starting and early warm up of the engine compared to the system of B. We also have a larger three-way catalyst system here, and it is put under the floor of the light duty vehicle so that we have a better three-way catalyst performance. The last one is exhaust treatment system for compression ignition engine. This feature is showing the layout of engine after treatment system embodying a continuously regenerating diesel particulate filter or CRDPF and selective catalytic reduction system or SCR system. The CRDPF compresses an oxidation catalyst followed by a wall flow particulate filter in this section. The oxidation catalyst oxidizes the engine out HC and CO and a portion of NO into N2. And then the SCR system uh, uses NH3 which is derived from the urea solution uh, via a rapid hydrolysis in the hydrolysis catalyst. And this SCR will further reduce NOx emission and it converts this NOx into N2 or nitrogen. Okay, we have uh, completed the discussion of this chapter 11. Thank you and stay safe.